Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We exalt you for your faithfulness. Thank you for bringing us again this evening to press forward in what you have started to speak to our hearts. Lord, we thank you for pointing us unto the meat that you wanted to eat. We are asking that our eyes of understanding will be opened and we will see what you are showing us, how to go about it as we wait on you for a divine visitation. Thank you for what you intend to do, even with our lives, as a result of this laborious convocation. We thank you for all of us that are gathered in different places. We are asking Father, reach out to us and do a new thing with our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, in the morning, when I started to approach our first talk, I wanted to uh, ask you to see the context in which these passages have come to us. I wanted to establish the fact that there is something in the heart of the Lord, something that God is longing for, even in our day, that is asking you to lift up your eyes. And I was trying to, to look at the, con the context, both for Genesis chapter 13 and John chapter 4. I saw that in, in Genesis 13, the strife, the struggle that was arising from the life of Abraham and Lot, why the Philistines, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Amorites, all those that God had intended to hand over their land, they were still there. And they were still bulging and getting stronger. Yet God's own servants, they are not seeing what God wanted. They are only looking at heads, they are looking at tents, they are looking at their flocks. They are not seeing the bigger picture. And so this night, we are looking at lifting up, lift up your eyes to see God's bigger picture. Lift up your eyes to see what is God's big agenda for our generation and for our time. And so I want you again to pick the scripture. I'll pick it again from Genesis 13. I'll pick it again from John chapter 4. And as I do that tonight, I'm praying that God will deliver you from being myopic, that God will enlarge our heart to see what is God longing for? What is the Spirit of God wanting to draw you into? And why is God pursuing you with His love the way He has been doing what is it that God wants to establish in our day and in our time? So we start today by looking at the uh, Genesis chapter 13 scripture. Let's go to Genesis 13. And when you get to Genesis 13, we are going to now pick it. Genesis 13. I want us to pick it from, not from the beginning of that story, because to, tonight I just want you to look at what God is showing us. In Genesis 13, I want you to look at verse, hmm, right? Let me just ask you to look at it from verse 
8. From verse 8, I'll read it to verse 17. Genesis from chapter 13, verse 8, up to verse 18. That's the end of that chapter. Can you please flash that uh, for me as we pick it up together? And Abraham said unto the Lord, Let there be no strife, I pray you, between me and thee. And between my head men and thy head men, for we be brethren. Is not the old land before you? Separate thyself. I pray you from me. If thou will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted his eyes, lifted up his eyes, and beheld all the plains of Jordan, that is, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lord journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abraham, After that Lord was separated from him, Lift up now thy eyes, And look from the place where thou art, Northward and southward, And eastward and westward, For all the land which thou seest, To you will I give it, And to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto you. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts as we begin to lift up our eyes tonight. We are going to go back to John chapter 4 later on, but let's quickly uh, attempt to set our agenda from here before we go again to John chapter 4 tonight as the Lord will permit us. Amen. Now, I want you to look at the various issues that was highlighted for us in that passage very quickly. In the morning, I said, as long as you are not seeing God's bigger picture, people that have no journey to go with you, they may set up a fight that will only waste your time. When your eyes are not lifted up, you might just be seeing the environment, might just be seeing the immediacy the immediate things around you. And you may get yourself overwhelmed. You may get yourself soaked up in all the peripheral issues 
that is not going to contribute to your journey with God. As long as you are looking at things that have already happened, things that have become tangible, things that have become visible already, you might see yourself contending because actually people can only contend with you over what they can see. People can only struggle with you to seek to possess what has already happened. What is yet to be, nobody is fighting for you over it. What is yet in the invisible realm, in the purpose of God for your life, no one is there to struggle with you. So every time you see yourself struggling, or somebody struggling with you over anything, it is because that thing has become visible enough that people that have no eyes for eternity can fight for it. And so the first thing I want you to note, uh, when Abraham said to Lord, Lord, there's no need for us to quarrel. Let there be no strife between me and you. We are brethren. We are going somewhere. We can't allow flocks. We can't allow X-Men. We can't allow cattle. We can't allow all this to become a reason why we are going to be struggling and fighting and not seeing God's bigger picture. So when Abraham said to Lot, you can, if you want to go to the left, make a decision, make your choice. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Because the land is so large and there's so much that we are yet to catch in the purpose of God. I'm not sure Lot had any vision for a future for his life. I'm not sure Lot has any lot in the purpose of God. I said in the morning that whatever is Lot's lot, that Lot's lot is already lost as you look at all about his life. All that he saw when he lifted up his own eyes, he wasn't seeing the bigger picture. Neither was he seeing any future that God would have shown him. Let me show you something that was wrong about how he lifted up his eyes. In verse, in verse 10, And Lord lifted up his eyes. In the first place, I noted in the morning, that if not because something was wrong with Lot, Lot will not have been the one to lift up his eyes and take anything first. After all, all about Lot was a derivative from Abraham. Lot could not have been anything here if not at the instance of Abraham. Lot could not have been in any position that anybody would talk about him. If not for the benevolence and the grace of God in the life of Abraham, possibly Lot could have perished back in Aaron when he lost his father and when there was nobody to take care of him. Lot became whatever we are talking about out of the abundance of Abraham. And it was because Abraham was on that journey that we are hearing about Lot. If Abraham was not on this journey, we would not know anything about Lot. So for Lot to lift up his eyes, I saw that what he lifted up is not his eyes. He lifted up his heart. He lifted up his appetite. He lifted up his greed. He lifted up his, his personal ambition. That's what he lifted. 
He wasn't lifting up an eye for a vision. And look at it. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain. I thought that when somebody lifts up his eyes, he should have seen mountains. He should have seen the hills. He should have seen high things. But I was surprised that Lord lifted up his eyes. And all he saw, all he beheld, was the plain of Jordan. That it was well watered everywhere. Those are the things that his heart was longing for. Was looking for well watered plains. Conquered lands. And he was, he was seeing the well watered land before before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He was seeing something, but he didn't know there's a red, red letter X that God had placed on that land and said this one will soon be destroyed. He wasn't seeing that what he was longing for, what he was looking for, will soon, will soon be, be gone, will soon be destroyed, will soon be uh, overtaken. He didn't see that. There are many people that are lifting up their eyes today. And all they are seeing is this world that is passing away. All they are seeing are these things that will soon dissolve. They are only looking at things that will soon pass off. Second, Second Peter chapter 3. Let me read that quickly before I return here. In Second Peter chapter 3, the Bible says it was describing what will happen about this present world. He said, he said, but the heavens, I better pick it from verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens will have old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store. They are reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men can slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall met with father and eat. The earth also and the works that are daring shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the element shall melt with father it. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look for new heavens and for a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. But when Lord lifted up his eyes, he only saw Sodom and Gomorrah looking well watered, looking well established. He didn't see the future. He didn't see the end. He didn't see all that he saw will soon dissolve. Will soon be burnt up. And will soon be overthrown. He never saw that. Even as God is bringing us up in this meeting, I said, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. For God to reveal to us the bigger picture of what God is about to do in our day. What God is about to do in your life, I first of all want you to look at a lot. 
a lot who is lifting up his eyes, it will look as if he's also lifting up his eyes. But when he lifted up his eyes, what did he see? He beheld the plain of Jordan that it was well watered. Everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Then Lot, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lord journeyed east. And they separated themselves the one from the other. I don't know what Lot had in mind. Lot was leaving his old uncle to, to, to be strangulated. He took all the well watered gardens. He took all the good places where things can easily sprout. He didn't see a future. Neither did he consider anything about this his great uncle that brought him up. That's normal for men that have eyes only for the things of the world. Men that have eyes only for the things that are temporary, things that are ephemeral. That's normal for those whose destiny and whose destination is down here. We are not looking for a city whose builder and architect is God. Now, so Lot chose him all that plain, and he went, he journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from the other. Verse uh, 12. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and I praise God for that. He dwelt in the land that God sent him to go. He did not shift from where God placed him, even though it may be dry. Even though it may be presently an arid land where there is nothing, it was better for you to be in the center of God's will for your life, even if that will of God is presently appearing dry and difficult. It was better for you to remain where God has posted your life and doing what God has called you to do, even if it is appearing to be presently, presently unpromising. It is better for you to be where heaven has located your life, doing what God has shown you to do, even if friends, relatives, colleagues, even Christian brothers decide to go their own way. When Lord was going, I could imagine him driving all the flocks, all the heads, and how his men were excited. We are going to the place that is well watered. We are going to the place where business will boom. We are going to the place where we are going to make it. We are going to the place where we are going to have breakthroughs. They never saw a breakdown coming. They never saw an overthrowing coming. They never saw that what they are looking for is temporary and is going to soon finish. They didn't see that. Now as you lift up your eyes, I want you to pray. Lord, cause my eyes to see that which is eternal. Cause my eyes to see that which is enduring. Cause my eyes to see the bigger picture, the things that you have in mind for me. Lord, let my eyes be lifted. Not to see ordinary vanity. Not to see empty ambition. Not to see the things that everyone is scrambling for in this world. Lord, deliver me from getting trapped with men that are going nowhere. The Bible said, Abraham dwelt in the Canaan, in the land of Canaan. And Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain. And pitch his tent towards Sodom. I don't have the time because I'm not talking about Lord. Chapter 14 will have shown you the foolishness of his choice. You will have seen how he had gone into a place where his destiny, the destiny of his children, the destiny of his 
family and all about him will soon be completely destroyed. He was going to become one of those people that are actually foolish in their final choice. But because he is not my focus tonight, I will not want to spend time diverting myself to Mr. Lot. I don't have any lot in Lot. So let me go away from that. Now the Bible said, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So, verse 14, that's where we are coming. All of you, please turn your Bibles to verse 14. And Genesis 13, verse 14, that's where our our theme actually was taken. If we approach it from this side, or if we approach it from John chapter 4, or if we approach it even from uh, Isaiah chapter 60, there are several places where God instructed us to lift up our eyes. And I will be exploring all of that as we are going by the grace of God. I'm trusting that the Spirit of God will set you in motion. The Lord will set your heart aright. You move away from empty contention. You move away from contrast and competition. You move into what is God's bigger picture for us so that we can be useful in this day of His visitation so that the revival for which God is setting our lives, we may not perish that revival. We may rather grow it, may rather develop in it, may rather flow with it until the entire earth is filled with the glory of God. Now the Bible said, And the Lord said to Abraham, and this is very important, And the Lord said to Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him, there are things that God had to separate from your life, there are things that God had to take out of your hand, so that your eyes can be properly focused. There are people that are causing distraction for your life, there are people that every time you look at them, they make you to begin to enter into imaginary battles. You are going to pray to them and say, Lord, separate me from all such lots that have no lot in where you are carrying me. Father, set me apart from all those addendum that I may have carried along. They are not letting me see my direction. They are not letting me see where I'm going. Lord, set me apart from them so that my life may find the focus for which you are setting me up. God will do that. The Bible says, And the Lord said to Abraham, After that Lord has left him, after that Lord was separated from him, the Lord spoke to him. The Lord spoke to him. The Lord spoke to him. The Lord was giving him a fresh instruction. A fresh, a fresh revelation of what he needed to become. And in the course of this meeting, brother or my sister, what are the lots that must be separated from your life? What are the things that is giving you unnecessary contention? Can you release it? What are those things that you thought anytime you see this person, your heart just jumped? Your heart just jumped. Anytime you are hearing about his voice or you are hearing his name, oh, something is saying, you must fight now, you must fight now. If there is someone you must fight, I think you are fighting a wrong fight. I think you are not fighting a good fight. You are not fighting the fight of faith. I think God must take away lots from your life so that you do not get yourself entangled in things that you are not meant for. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, And God spoke to Abraham. God came and spoke to Abraham after he looked at Steve, everything has left him. Don't forget that at this time, if there was any relative that should have taken care of Abraham, 
he could have been locked. Eliezer was not even as close. Eliezer was just a servant. But Lot was his relative. If anything were to have happened, Lot should have taken responsibility. Lot would have been the one to inherit this man or to do something to help him. But that has also left. God may need to separate from you. Those that you are looking up as your third leg, that every time your heart is tending towards them and see they are the ones that will support you, they are the ones that will help you, they are the ones that will carry you going. Perhaps there are people that you put so much confidence on and any little thing they have done, it disturbs you so much. You find disappointment so much. And I want to say to you, why will you be finding disappointment? With a man with whom you have no appointment. It is only God that we have to deal with. But if you now begin to focus your eyes on men with whom you have no appointment, you will suffer many, many disappointments needlessly. Disappointment that is not necessary. You see yourself struggling with. But you see, God was saying to Abraham, lift up your eyes. And I want to see one word there. He said, lift up now. Lift up now. Thy eyes. I seem to say, now that Lord has left, now that your contender is no more here, now that the thing that gives you unnecessary distraction has left, now that you have done away with anything that will be creating unnecessary unnecessary argument in your heart that will not let you face your direction in life. Now, lift up your eyes. There are some of you listening to me. The reason why your eyes are scattered and you are distracted is because you keep contrasting yourself with somebody. Say, for that young man, we were in school together. He is now a professor. I don't even know what I'm doing with my own life. That's why you are running up and down. Every time you see him riding his car, whether he has just got a mortgage or whatever, you don't know how he's coming, but it gives you sleepless night. I see you go by, oh God, oh God, when will you remember me? When will you change my state? When will you change my car? When will you do that? Friends, may God take away all those slots from your life. So that you can set you on what heaven wants you for. Some of you, you are not seeing the bigger picture for your life yet. You are only seeing peripheral issues. And you are only struggling with things that will soon pass away. You are only paying attention to the things that don't really matter much in the evaluation of heaven concerning your life. Lift up now, now your eyes. Maybe the first thing you are going to be praying about tonight to say, Lord, the things that have preoccupied me, preoccupy my thinking, that has preoccupied my attention, that has kept me just, you know, in the rat race, rat race with human beings. Father, set it away from me. Set it apart from me, that I may see where I'm going, that I may see what I'm supposed to live for, that I may see what heaven has in mind for me. I thank God that God has led us over the years. I know how God has led us as we move on from one point to another, from one point to another until we arrive at this kind of meeting that we are all seated in. But unless your eyes are focused, unless you can see the bigger picture, there are too many distractions that will make you to waste your energy, waste your heart, you even waste your prayers on things that are not necessary. Now, lift up now, now your eyes. I'm asking, have you let your lots? Have you let all your competitors, your contenders? Have you left all those things that is making you 
You know, some of you I see you seeing vision, but it's not an heavenly vision. And let's see you a vision that is coming to you from envy. Because you no know, envy also is a vision, but it's an introvision. You know, when you are seeing a when you are envious, you are, you are seeing a vision, but your vision is introverted. You are bothered about what someone else is that you are not. And so, instead of seeing where God is taking you, that man has become your vision. That man has, and, and unless you conquer him, you can't see the road forward. Will you pray and say, Lord, deliver me from all such? Don't let me waste my life. Don't let me waste my year, I mean, my years. Don't let me waste my opportunities. Think against another. That's not important. So God said, lift up your eyes. Now. Lift up your eyes now. Lift up your eyes now. I'm praying that tonight, something will happen. God will set you something in your spirit. So that you can see where you are going. You can see God's bigger picture. God's bigger agenda for your life as an individual and for us as a people, as a people, as disciples, that God will help our eyes to see the bigger picture so that we don't waste our lives doing ordinary things, struggling with men or struggling with those that are not part of what heaven has actually assigned our lives for. Now, it's a lift up now, now your eyes. Now, when he said lift up now your eyes, there's something else that is coming in that place. And I want all of you to be very uh, alert as we are studying that scripture. Lift up now your eyes. And look. Now, I want you to see, I don't, I'm not yet dealing with the word look. I want you to look at the few prepositions you will see in the word of God now. Lift up now your eyes and look from. You know, there are so many prepositions you can put in front of the word look. And it will make a whole lot of difference. If it says, look at. Look at where you are. Look at your situation. Look at how you are struggling. Look at you. Look at the house you are living. Look at everything. Look at how your children are. Look at how you are struggling. Many, many times. When you look at, you are not seeing the future. You're only looking at your present. You're only looking at the present situation. Many times when you look at, you are confronted with your immediacy. And the thing blocks your eyes like this. You can't see anywhere else because what you are looking at has blocked your eyes. My brother, my dear sister, I don't know what you are doing. I don't know where you are sitting. But I'm asking you, are you looking at yourself? Are you looking at your predicament? Are you looking at your situation? Are you looking at your past? Are you looking at all those things that look scattered around your life? Now, if it is to look at, I imagine what will have happened to, to, to Abraham. You will have looked at the barrenness of his wife. You will look, look at the dryness of his environment. You will look, look at the fact that up to now, he has not even got a plot of land. You will have looked at the fact that everywhere around him, he was now a lonely man. And you will have been asking, what am I doing here? Why is my life like this? And he may have been shedding tears. He may have been so depressed and confused. Now, my brother, my dear sister, 
The man that God has a greater agenda for, the man that God wants to show a greater picture, he does not allow him just to look at where he is. Does not just allow him to look at the present challenges. Doesn't just allow him to look at the problems on hand. Does not just allow him to look at, at what is happening to him presently. All those who focus on looking at things, looking at themselves, looking at their situation, looking at their problems, looking at their colleagues, looking at their classmates, they are prone. They are prone to depression. They are prone to confusion. They are prone unto arguing. They are prone unto fighting. Because since they can't see anywhere else, since they can't see any anything beyond where they are, they have to struggle to survive. I want to ask you, what are you looking at? But the word of God said, lift up your eyes now. Look not on. That's the next preposition you could have used on. Look on. God did not say look on. Because when you look on, you are putting your confidence, you are putting your hope, you are putting your expectation on something else. Either on people around you or on a promise that somebody a few cool promise that somebody has made, you are looking on that. Thank God that God did not say, look on. Look at what the Bible says you should do. Lift up now your eyes and look from. Look from. When the word of God says, look from, there are two ways to look at it and the two ways will be correct for me tonight. When he said look from, that means look away from. Look away from where you are. Look away from what is happening. Look away from what people have done to you. Look away from all the disappointments. Look away from all the useless blackmail. Look away from even those who cost you and say you are not going to go anywhere. Look away from them. Look away from all that contended with you. Look away from all the damages that have done to your life. Look away from all of those things. They are not important. I say to you tonight, if you are going to lift up your eyes, if you are going to see God's bigger picture from you, you must begin to look from, from the place where you are. Look away from your failures. Look away from all the struggles. Look away from all the challenges. Look away from. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes so that you can see God's bigger picture. That's where we are going. God's bigger picture. The invisible presence to your colleagues is more eternal than all that people are seeing presently. And I just trust God that God will anoint your eyes to look from. Look from. That's the first uh, consideration that I want to give that. Look from where you are. Look from all that people have said about you. That's not important. Look, from, look away from all the past. Look away from all of that. Look away from challenges. Look away from disappointment. Look away from it. Oh, somebody cheated you. Somebody, you know, you know, cheated you in your business. And it looks as if, if not because of what the man did, your business would have been something else. And you kept looking at that. Every time you say, Kai, if not for Mr. So-and-so, if not for that one, if not for what they did, I know where I would have been now. No, 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 let me tell you. Where you are now is not where you will be. Look away from all of that. So that you can see what God is showing you. So that you can see what God wants to do with your life. So that you can see what God is setting for you to walk into. In his eternal, I mean eternal, eternal purpose for your life. 
Now, what's the second congregation? What's the second consideration? When you say look from, that means to say, let everything you are now, everything you are now, look at it as if it's only a starting point. Everything, all that you have become now, look from it. It is not yet what to celebrate. At best, they are only but foundation. They are only stepping stone. They are only the beginning of a greater day for you. Have you preached so well? Have you established something that looks like a big ministry? If you are going to be part of what God is saying, look from it. Look away from that. Let it only be, as at best, the starting point. Let it just be, at best, the, 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 the beginning. The future is bigger than this. The glory that God is showing us is far, far beyond all we have said, all that we have known. You say, oh, Bragule, we thank God. You have done this, you have done this, you have done that. But you see, as I hear God keep speaking to me, say, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes from here. Lift up your eyes from all of that. And all the things that people would like to congratulate you with as seem that has become the definition of your life because they've not seen the future. And they just want to make you an history. Because what people are describing about you now is what has happened that they have seen. It's your history. But there is a future that men have not seen about you. And God is saying, Lift up your eyes and look from that. Look from that. Look from that. As we will pray tonight, you will look from that. We say, oh God, so there's a future. There is something. There's a glory. There's a dimension. There's a manifestation of your glorious power that I'm yet to see. You know, as we are talking about the Holy Spirit in the Bible study, and we are talking about what the Spirit of God can do. The person of the Holy Spirit, He said, He will show you things to come. He will open your eyes to see the things of Jesus. So as we are talking about lift up your eyes, the Holy Spirit Himself is going to come to assist us, to carry us to where we are going. Now He said, lift up now your eyes. And look from the place where thou art. Look from where you are. Look from where you are because where you are now, at best, is a beginning. And I want to thank God for Abraham, what he did. I will read that to you before I stop, before I go away from him. Now the Bible said, God was telling him, look from the place where thou art. And look at how God said, look northward, look southward, look eastward, look westward. How could I put that now? How would I explain that? Because there are only four, <laughs> four, four cardinal points that you, every time you want to describe things, you, those are the four points. You look northward. You look southward, you look eastward, you look westward. So that means that God said, look all around. Look round about. Take a global look. Hallelujah. I hear God saying, lift up your eyes. Take a global look. Look from where you are standing. Look away from where you are. Where you are is not your burial ground, my brother. What you have done before is wonderful, but it's nothing compared with what God wants to do. Some of you say, but I'm old. Hey, my, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm old. I don't have strength again. What is God saying? But I want to tell you that one day, one day with God, one day when God decides to open His heaven upon your life, can be much more than than a thousand years. One day, one final day in the life of Samson, when God decided to have mercy on him, one day in his life, we are told that what he did, the number of Philistines that he killed, 
were much more than all he did in 20 years. One day, one day, one day when God decides to help your life, can overwhelm all that people have said about you for over many, many years. One day. So let me ask you to lift up your eyes. Look from where you are standing. Look from the place where you presently are. And see what is God showing you. God said, look northward. Look southward. Look eastward. Look westward. Look all directions. Look in all directions. Take a global look. A global look in, in all that God is talking about. Brothers and sisters, I really wish to say to you tonight, when God said we should go and, and say, lift up your eyes, it's because there's something the Lord wants to do. I want you to know that we have followed Him for years. We have followed His Word. We have taught the Word of God. And we have believed Him. And we have seen results to the extent of which He has shown us mercy. For God is saying, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes from where you are. Lift up your eyes from where you are standing. Lift up your eyes from all you have achieved. Look from me. Look away from it. And see what I want to show you. And God now said, All the land which thou seest, all the land which your eyes can see, to you will I give it. And to your seed, not for two years, not for three years, but forever. Now, you can see that what God wanted this man to see far, far surpasses all that Lot was struggling with him with. All that God wanted this man to see far, far surpasses. In fact, it subsumes all that Lot could ever get. In fact, if you are following my, my, the way I'm reading, I saw that westward, eastward, that's where, where Mr. Lot went. We are told that Lot traveled east. And God said, look eastward, look westward, look northward, look southward, everywhere you can look, as far as you can see. So which means, even as Lot was going to the east, Abraham saw beyond him and saw that all of those things that even Lot was going to collect will soon become his own. I pray that the Lord will give you eyes to see what God is showing us in the coming days in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. You know, this passage, one time I was reading again and again, I've been reading this for several years, it has meant a lot to my life. It has pushed me out of several things at various levels in our work with God. I remember some years in 1993 we were doing a, a meeting, a small meeting, and God said, lift up your eyes. I remember I could not finish that meeting when I, I hated the small office where Peace House was located that time. And I called the brethren and said, Today, the Lord is saying, move out. Of course, we couldn't return to that space. Of course, we had to move. And we have ever moved. And I remember we moved to a place and it looked so big. And it looked so wonderful. And we are so excited. And we are saying, oh yes, this is a place. And they told me that if we build something here, for the next 30 years, we don't need to change anything. You know, a, a myopic man. How will you build something for 30 years? And you'll be in a limited space, 200 by 100 feet, for 30 solid years of your life. I didn't see, I didn't understand. But I thank God, he will come up again and say, Look away from here. Lift up your eyes. There's a journey, journey that I want to take you. There are some people that are, are, are making around you now, they are not part of that journey. Let them go. Leave them. So that you can see where I'm sending you. 
even this meeting, I sense that God is not just bringing a topic. We are not just doing exposition. God is giving us a direction. God is speaking about what we must do. Lift up your eyes. When I will go now to the to the passage in John, it will make more sense to you, but this is very critical. This is the beginning of it. He said, lift up your eyes and I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Now, all of you look at the scripture. Look at that scripture because it's such a very important scripture. And I will make thy seed. I thought, if he said I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. If it's going to be as the dust of the earth, then the word seed should have been seeds. And if it is something to be numbered, it should have been seeds. Then shall thy seeds also be numbered. But knowing that God does not make mistake, knowing that God does not commit uh, grammatical blunders, and knowing that God is very consistent with the usage of that word seed all over, from Genesis chapter 3, when God began to speak about the seed of the woman, up to now that God is talking about the seed. And when you go through to the New Testament, to the book of Galatians, He's talking about seed, not seeds. So I saw that this particular prophecy that God was giving Abraham, He was talking about the seed. And by the grace of God, we are going to see that this passage is again what Jesus Christ was pointing at in that chapter, chapter 4. Why this uh, Samaritan woman was bothered about you, a Samaritan, I'm a Jew, and all of that. He had not, the, the gate did not see that as far as the promise that God gave Abraham is concerned, as far as the promise, the covenant God made with Abraham was concerned, it does not, it do, there's no demarcation. You can't count and say, this is the end of that one. This is where you cannot go. You cannot be part of us because you are Samaritan. I'm a Jewish woman and all of that. No. And Jesus wanted to break that barrier. So, and I see it. Which means what God was speaking to Abraham. What God was asking his eyes to be lifted up to see. Something that will become uncountable like the dust of the earth. Something that will affect the entire world. Northward, southward, eastward. And yet God was speaking to this man. Lift up your eyes. This night I want to pray. That God will give us blessed seeing eyes. That our eyes will be opened, our eyes of understanding will be lifted up so that we can see what is God showing to us. And as God was speaking to him, I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. So that if any man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed, thy seed, also be numbered. So as far as God was speaking to Abraham, God was showing him a future. God was showing him a glory. God was showing him a divine promise. Oh, and I'm praying that as, as God brings me and you to this point in this meeting, the Lord will envision you. The Lord will change the way you are thinking. The Lord will release you from, from parochialism, from, from tribalism, from, from all the things that has narrowed your life, that has made you fought for nothing. I want God to do that for us in the course of this time that we are gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ. So the final instruction God gave the man, Arise! 
arise. And I'm not going to deal with that here tonight. It will be part of our final charges as we'll be going. Arise. Walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it. And for me, I was not just thinking that God said, go and do land mapping. I don't think God was just saying, okay, uh, I want you to walk, walk through the length of the land. Because he couldn't have walked the length of that land. What his eyes have seen, he couldn't have walked it. I think what God was saying to him is that walk through the land eh, in the understanding of the length of your journey. In the understanding of the breadth of your journey. Walk through the land with the perspective of the length. The perspective of the breadth of it. It took me a lot to understand that a man that does not have perspective a man that does not have understanding of where God is taking him, he will always live a narrow life. A man who cannot see beyond his nose, he cannot live beyond that. And one of the things God must do is to open our understanding, to open our heart, to enlarge our heart, that we might be able to walk in the length and in the breadth of his vision for our lives. Go to John chapter 4, where this second passage that we are going to continue to study in the course of this meeting has come from. Now, in John chapter 4, I don't want to go back to the preambles I did in the afternoon or in the morning. I believe that even if you are not here then, you will listen to that message by yourself so that you can follow where we are going. Now, I told you that this chapter 4 and chapter 13 of, of Genesis, there are several things in common. And it takes a man of vision like the Lord Jesus not to set you into contention. Human beings who are bringing contention between him and John the Baptist. They were moving in between, in between, in between. This one would go here and say, Do you know that the man you baptized the other day has now been baptized and many people are going to him? They are no more coming to us. So I learned that they are now in that uh, uh, Jesus baptism. They have left John baptism. As if water baptism is what Jesus came to do. And the Bible says, Even Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Yet they say, I know Jesus has baptized everybody more than John. When Jesus heard that, he moved. He knew that he was not called to do that kind of thing. And he would not allow people to locate and localize him into what is not necessary. They went and confused John. Just said, no, he must increase. I must decrease. I told you that I am not the bridegroom. I told you that that he that is coming is mightier than me. I'm not qualified to lose even the latchet of his shoes. What are you talking about? I must decrease. He must increase. Yet they didn't keep quiet. They were probing and pulling him here and there and said, Look, that man, that man, if, if, do you know that he is drinking and eating with sinners? Are you sure? Are you sure? They brought Brother John to a confusion where he had to send people and say, go and ask him again. Go and ask him again. Is he the one to come or should we look for another? Ah. Ah. May God not allow you to be confused about what God has called you to do and is calling you to do. Very important. Now, Jesus spent time to deal with this issue. So by the time we came to chapter 4, verse 32, and he said, I have meat to eat that you don't know anything about. There's something I'm looking for. And he announced it to that woman and said, the hour is coming. And actually the hour has come. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, 
For the father seeketh such to worship him. Those are the ones that the father is looking for. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's not neither on that mountain or in that valley. That's not the issue. We don't say you do not worship on your mountain here or go to your valley there. That's not important. You can worship anywhere. But what God is looking for are those who worship him in spirit and in truth. The father is seeking such. The father is looking for that kind of seed. So when Jesus came to this point, the disciples still could not understand. They were still wondering whether somebody had gone to get him something else while they were away. He said, look, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Are you not saying there are yet four months and then come at harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and look on the fields. Now, I want you to see the, the way Jesus was bringing this now. Very important. We are asked in Genesis 13. He was to look. He was to look left, look right, look this. And, and God was talking about the seed. God was talking of all the land I will give you. But now in chapter 4. There's something to look on now. There's something to now lift our eyes to look on because something is already happening. The fulfillment of the promises is already coming. The manifestation of what God wanted to accomplish has already started. And may I pray that tonight God will help you to see that we are at a very vantage a position our day has broken. Something that God has been holding for years. God is saying, lift up your eyes now. Look on the fields. Look on the fields. For they are white already to harvest. They are white already to harvest. They are ready, ready now. Stop saying uh, in four months. Say you know there are yet four months and then come at harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. Those four months that you are thinking is already finished. Look on the fields for they are already white to harvest. They are already white to harvest. What God is about to do, heaven is already rising up to cause it to happen. Oh, this night. This night as we are going to call on God together and as I'm going to release you before the Lord, particularly tonight, I want to pray that you will see that something has moved in the heavenlies. Something has happened in the heavenlies. Now what you are seeing in the, in the Middle East, what you are seeing among uh, uh, the people those are talking of transgender. Those are talking of all the kind of foolishness. They are all pointing at the fact that, yes, yes, the field is white already to harvest. The field is already white unto harvest. God has already stood up to bring in the promises that he had made unto our fathers. God has already arisen to bring about what he has been speaking about. The day of the latter rain has come. The time of our visitation has come. My prayer is that you will no longer be closing your eyes when the time of our visitation has arrived. My prayer is that you will not be struggling with petty petty issues 
You will not allow someone to tie you down, fighting about what is not crucial, struggling to possess what is not there. When the day of your visitation has already come, lift up your eyes. Say you not that, oh, we have four more months, then shall we have harvest? Say, but I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto the eternal, unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Again, I said in the morning, and I want to say it again, I will be saying this before we go. Because it will be the nature of the move of God that is coming. The nature of what God wants to do to us in this end time will require that we will rejoice together. Those that are planting, those that are sowing, and those that are gathering, he that repeats, receive wages, and gather fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that repeats may rejoice together. The time when we will rejoice, not just in the little thing we are doing, when we start to see that yes, even though this brother is the one that saw, or this one came to reap it, we will rejoice together. There will be no need to say, but I'm the one who sowed that seed. I'm the one who was there. What are you doing? Go and plant your own, so that you can go and do your own reaping. I'm ready to reap what I sow. No. What God is bringing us to transcends all of that. It transcends all of that uh, parochial a self-possession that the devil had used to destroy the move of God in time past. And he that repair receive wages and gathered fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that repaired may rejoice together. Now look at the scripture please. And hearing is that saying true? Hearing is that saying true? One soweth, another reaper. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. So, brother, I want you to take note that because of where we have reached, there will be a lot. Some of us are laboring just to sow, but we may not be the one. That heaven has appointed to reap it. And it's not a defeat. And it's not a sign that we did not achieve. We have achieved. What's our achievement? We sow. We labored. But others have been sent to reap. Whereon they have bestowed no labor. That should not worry you. That should not be your problem. You know, say, Why are they coming? Why are they coming there? Why are they coming there? That is not the issue. What God is doing now demands that we break boundaries, we break all those things, all those things. You are, you are, you are Samaritan, I'm a Jew. Samaritan has nothing to do with the Jews. Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. These are children of one father. These are children of one father. The promise, the, the covenant God made in Genesis 13, they are all part of it. They are all inside and yet they want to create a demarcation. I sent you to reap that whereon you be so no labor. Other men labored and you have entered into their labors. You have entered into their labors so that both who labored, both who sow and those who reap may rejoice together. I'm looking forward to what God is saying He will do. I'm looking forward to to how God is going to bring to pass the things that he said he will do and how he intends to do it. And this evening, as I draw this issue to a close for us to pray together, I'm conscious that some of you will have to go into different places. 
But this evening as we cry to God together, as we call on the name of the Lord together, there are few issues that heaven is going to ask you to address. And as we are going to be addressing it, I don't want you to take this day for granted. Now, what is the first thing that we need to address? That I want you to check all over your life. What are you contending for? What are the battles you are fighting? Who are the locks that are putting up for you context, contention? Who are those people you are contrasting and competing your life with? What do they have that is giving you sleepless nights? What are they riding? That is putting you, you know, to run eh? as if you are going to lose your breath. Where are they reached that you thought that you have been left behind? When Lot was going to the east, everything looked as if everything is moving in his direction. He didn't see the red X upon Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't see chapter 14. You didn't see that there are raiders that are coming. In fact, the first indication is that they got there, some raiders came and captured him, his wife and children and his property. Thank God for Brother uh, Abraham. When they told me, I said, Lot has been captured and has been taken away by, the, by those people that came. He had to mobilize 318 soldier men from his house. To go and fight to bring Lot back. I thought Lot would have returned and said that. I'm sorry for the direction I went. I didn't know that those people are so wicked. He still went back there. It was Abraham that paid tight. To thank God for what God did. Mr. Lord that was required, I mean, uh, uh, delivered and rescued. With his wife, with his property. We didn't see him building one altar to God. He was still sitting there until the final verdict on Sodom came. And he, he was only saved by his teeth. He took nothing out. Even his wife was lost in that land. His daughters were lost. The one that did not get lost in the, in the fire. They came and brought him into trouble where they went. What manner of man is that? He ended losing all his lot. There was nothing about him I could talk about. Even the children that his daughter you know, pushed him to have with him, the incest that he had, those children were children of abomination up to today. The Amorites, the Moabites, even not for God that is calling some of them out, they are nowhere to be found. Let me ask you, what is the lot? That must be taken out of your life. What is that thing that is not letting you face where you are going? What is it? Are you a young man? Is it the issue of who to marry that has scattered your life, scattered your vision? You have tried this one, you have tried that one, you have tried that one. Everything is not working and you are contending. You are restless. Tonight the Lord is saying, after Lord has been separated from him, now say, lift up now your eyes. And I imagine that some of you will have to deliberately stand before God tonight and say, Lord, I'll let it go. I'll let it go. Some of you is that business that you thought that somebody has swindled you in and you are fighting. Sometimes I see you running everywhere. And what are you running about? You want to conquer a brother. You want to conquer a colleague. That's not what you are born for. There's a bigger journey that God has set before you. You don't have to be struggling. And you can't be a duplicate of someone else when God has a divine plan for your life. This evening as we are going to pray, what is the lot that must be taken away from your life? 
What is it that constitutes every form of struggle in your life? What is it that did not allow you to settle into what heaven has prepared and proposed your life for? Let it go tonight. Could it be a friend? Could it be an addendum? Could it be something that all the time it pulls you back? The Holy Spirit is demanding tonight for your eyes to be able to see where you are going. Let it go. Let it go. Let him go. You may lose something. It doesn't matter. Whatever you lose in order to regain your vision will be nothing in the coming days. Whatever you let go in order for you to hold God, in order for you to have a grip in the center of God's way for your life, it will be nothing. It will be of no value eventually because God will overpay you for all of those things. Whatever Lord got was nothing, was nothing compared with all that God is doing for Abraham. I ask you tonight, because we are going to pray, what is that that you have contended with? And it may not just be one physical lot, it may just be a sinful habit. It may be a sinful habit that is contending with the will of God in your life. It may be your self-ambition. That is not letting you say, Lord Jesus, have your way. It may be something else internal to you. That's what has made you always restless. And everyone said, but this man is not available for me to do anything with his life. This one is still struggling with my will over his life. This one is still struggling, struggling to find relevance. And yet he does not want to bear... Uh, Take his bearing from me. This night, the Lord is saying, lift up now your eyes. After Lord has been separated from him. Things have to be taken away from your life if you are going to walk well with God. Sin must be taken away from your life. The love of the world and the world system must be separated from your life. Whatever Lord represents for you as an individual, Tonight, he must go. So that your eyes of understanding can open. So that what God has in mind for you can become available to you. That we must deal with. Now, what is the next issue? He said, look. Look, lift up your eyes. Lord lifted up his eyes only to see ambition. He lifted up his eyes to see his greed. He lifted up his eyes to see his own personal appetite. He lifted up his eyes only to see ordinary planes. We're just looking at gardens. Wasn't seeing what heaven has in store for him. My friend, what is it that has preoccupied you? And I know that you need to be called out of that tonight. You need to say to Jesus, Jesus, what will it profit me if I gain all this and I should lose my soul? What will it be that I will exchange my life with if I should lose your destiny, your plan, your purpose for my life? This night, God is asking me to ask you, lift up your eyes. Look not at where you are. How many of you are just focusing Focusing on yourself, focusing on your things, focusing on where you are, focusing at, at things, rather than looking unto God for what God will have do in your life. This night, I sense that Jesus again is standing here. And he's saying, lift up your eyes. There's something I have for you. Lift up your eyes. Come away from these struggles. Come away from this thing that will not let you break loose. Come away from what has made your life a mere routine. You are just moving around in circle. You are just moving around in circle. You are not broken that cycle. Come away from that. The Holy Spirit is demanding particularly tonight. Lift up now your eyes. Now, what is the next issue to pray about? 
He says, have you not seen it's four months time before the harvest? You are there procrastinating your decision? You are there thinking that there's another four months before you will take a decision? You are imagining that there is still some more time. And I can imagine I met several people many years ago who will say, yes, Lord, I'm coming to serve you. Lord, I'm coming. Lord, I'm coming. Up to now, they have not come. They are growing old. They are now getting retired. It is now they say, oh, Lord, I'm still coming. I'm still coming. When there's nothing left in your life. Say you not four more months when I want you to lift up your eyes and see that the things that God meant for your life is already waiting. As I stop here to ask you to pray and to ask you to bow your heart to God and to ask you to deliberately, deliberately, deliberately look away from everywhere else, look away from people around you, Look away from your competitors. They are not important. They are not important. They are not there when God was fashioning His purpose for your life. And nobody must meet you on the road and change your direction. You need to say, Lord, what you are planning for my life, that's where I want to come. What you are drawing me to yourself to accomplish, that's what I want to become. Lord, open my eyes that I may see what you have prepared for me. Wherever you are tonight, those of you that are sitting in centers, those of you that are sitting in your families, those of you that are watching this either on your Facebook or you have gone to the YouTube, you are just following, you are alone where you are, but the Lord already saw you. The Lord already knows where you are coming from. And the Lord is saying, lift up now your eyes. The time you are spent with struggling with Lot is enough. The time you are wasted struggling with issues, issues that have no eternal consequence for your life is enough. You have been too engrossed, engrossed with things of low value. The Lord said, now lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and let me show you what next for you. I want you to now pray. I'd like you to take a position of prayer. Forget who is sitting by your side. Forget who is looking around. Nobody is looking around now. It's you. The Lord is looking at you. The Lord is speaking and focusing on you. Are you sitting here in this meeting tonight? And the Holy Spirit is saying, Now, let this lot go. What are the lots that must be released from your life? Now, let it go. God bless you. God bless you. Take a portion of prayer. And years have rolled. Opportunities have come and gone. But God is saying, tonight, lift up your eyes. All the lot that must be taken out of your life, let it go tonight. All the issues that the devil will want to preoccupy your life with, release it and say, Lord, let it go. Lord, let it go. Lord, let it go. Lord, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Is it a relationship that has held you down? Heaven is saying, that is not part of your journey. Release it tonight. Is it a habit that has has scattered whatever God wants to do in your life. Tonight, heaven is saying, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Get on your knees as you are calling on God now. Let the Lord Jesus have his way with your life. Wherever you are, we are calling on God. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, please come down. Move from person to person in this day. Move from row to row, oh God. Those that are already trapped, release them tonight. Lord, I'm asking those that thought they have come to their stagnant point. I'm hearing you say, look away from where you are. There is still a future for you. Lord, I ask that tonight your spirit will break forth now. 
Break every yoke, everything that ties men down. Whatever it is, whatever habit it is. Lord Jesus, please step in now. Until you help the woman of Samaria, the Samaritan woman. She's just stuck. Talk with that bucket that she was going up and down with. But when you broke loose on her life, she had a story to tell. She went to the old city and everybody came out and said, Kai, come and see the man that told me what I've ever done. Tonight we are praying. As I'm calling on God on your behalf, I expect you to respond to the Lord right now. Wherever you are, in different parts of the world where you may be listening to the word of God. And whether you are in a small village, whether you are in your room, or whether you are in a center where people are gathered together along with you, whether there are brothers who are assisting us or not, heaven is standing by us and say, lift up now, 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 lift up your eyes, now. Heaven is saying, now, not tomorrow. Now, not next week. Now, 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 now. Now, and I see the Lord knocking on your heart and say, Give me space in your life that I may show you the next level of your of your of my purpose for you. Some of you you are stuck, you are stuck in a relationship, a relationship that God did not initiate. And to God, if you are responding to and again, say, Lord, tonight, tonight, even this evening, Lord, turn my story around. I'm willing to let that Lord go. Whatever it is, sinful habit, wrong relationship, wrong businesses that has tied your life down, let it go tonight so that heaven might be opened afresh to you. You have lifted up your hands wherever you are in any of the places. Raise it above your, your divine call, divine purpose for me. God bless you. And I want you to do one more thing. I want you to put an action to your decision here tonight. Mm. Uh, even if you are alone, I want you to kneel down before God and say, Lord, today, 26th of October, I separate my life from every contamination, every distraction, everything that is pulling me downward. Does not let me go forward with you. Let it go, Lord. I release it. I release that habit. I release that connection. I release it, Lord Jesus, that I may hold you with my two hands. Where are you? I want you to take a step out. I want you to kneel before the Lord. I want you to come towards the altar. If there's an altar where you are kneeling down. If there's no altar, just kneel down there and say, Lord, make this my altar between me and you. Let this night be my turning point. Abraham moved from where he used to be. He went to Mamre and pitched a new tent, be an altar to God. This night, something must happen. We can't finish this night and you are still sitting where you are. God bless you. Just stand and walk towards the altar. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for my sisters. Thank you for lifting those hands above your head. Now it is time just to move with it. You must not allow this hour to say, you. Take it. Take my life. And let it be consecrated, Lord, unto you. Take my moment, take my day. God bless you, my friends. God bless you, my friends. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, that sister. Just walk out before God. That brother, just get on your knees before God. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. As you lift that hand above your head, I want you to now be on your knees. If you can come towards the altar, do so. Prayers are going to go on now. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, that sister. Wherever you are, heaven is doing something new today. Heaven is releasing you from every entanglement. Heaven is taking away those things that the devil is setting up around you. I see that's where you are going to end. God is releasing you tonight. The Spirit of God is breaking every yoke around you. It might be something the devil ties you down with. It has become a sickness. It has become an obsession. Come out of it here tonight. 
come out of it here tonight. God bless you. I'll pray now. I'll pray now for wherever you are. There's no distance with the Spirit of God. There's no distance. Hands that are stretched out to you, even we respect it. Father, tonight, Lord, as many as are stepping out before you, as many as are saying, take away this lot. Take away this entrance of my life. Take away this distraction. Take away this sinful habit. Cut off this thing that will not let me see your purpose. Father, tonight, Lord Jesus, as you did for the woman of Samaria, and you change her story, and she never remained the same again, do that for us tonight. Go from center to center, Baba. Go from row to row, oh God. Breathe upon these lives one by one. Break the yoke of their lives tonight. Some have been tied down with sickness for years. Break that yoke now in the name of Jesus. Break that bondage now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask everything that will not let them break forth, that is procrastinating your, your, your purpose for their lives, let it go right now. As you took away Lot, it was possible for Abraham to see, to see, to see beyond, to see the length and breadth, the height and depth of his call. Lord, I ask tonight, as we are calling on your name, as those that are standing and kneeling before you and stepping before the altar, break the yoke around them. And let today be a turnaround, 26th of October. Let it go on record. That that's the day you turn things around for them. That's the day there are lots left. That's the day there are hindrances left. That's the day there are bondages left. That's the day, oh God, every distraction in their lives was destroyed. Thank you for hearing us. Now Jesus, step in. Lord Jesus, take over. Lord Jesus, shine your light. Lord Jesus, bring in your deliverance. Lord Jesus, you are the gift. You are the gift of our deliverance. You are the gift of God. You are the one that has brought this water that will become a well in our hearts. Lord, I ask, step in right now. Quench all their tests. Quench all their restlessness. Quench all their sicknesses. Quench all of this because you are God's gift for our deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for doing this. Thank you, Lord, for going this extra, extra mile with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for doing beyond what a man can do. Going beyond where a man can go. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Now, Lord, I commit these ones to you. There may be hands to assist them, but there may be no hands because they are alone. I ask, Lord, that you will appear to them. Please raise her for their lives. This decision tonight will not go down the drain. It will actually become a turning point, a stepping stone for what you want to do with their lives. Lord, there are yet some others in this meeting tonight who have heard you and what you have said to them that can't all the years pass, can't all your achievement pass, can't them as only stepping stone. Come with me into something new. Come with me into a new dimension. Lord, all saw that are hearing your word here tonight. And they say, yes, Lord. Father, move them forward. Take them to a higher ground. So that, Lord, this convocation will launch them to a new dimension of your purpose for their lives. Never will they remain the same again. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Thank you for doing much more than we can think or imagine. Hallelujah to your name. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.